Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Federal government on false forex tax, jobs, investment policies. All thieves deploy CCTV mortar launches along pipeline routes. Clark seeks exclusion of Abia Imo Undo from NDDC. Mm. Akere Dolu receives Sawolu, Makede, Abiodun, and Oyebanji. U.S. court rejects request for FBI reports on Tinumbu. Land Rocketeering rocks FCTA. EFCC chair orders staff members to declare assets. And Senate defends 160 million SUVs, 160 million Naira worth SUVs for National Assembly members. You're undefendable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, which will, I, I have to read this defense to you ah, guys. Please, <clears throat> the Senate really put up a defense. Okay? Mm. Strong word. You need to hear. First of all, um, you know, they're talking about uh, the reason why they are going to purchase the 2023 model of the Toyota Land Cruiser SUV okay. for 107 senators. And each one is 160 million naira. Very <laughs> This is in addition to the bulletproof vehicles being purchased for the Senate president and his deputy. Um, of course, Nigerians are screaming and shouting. This, you know, we're saying it does not show sensitivity to, you know, what Nigerians are going through. Anyways, here is the defense. And I'll leave Nigerians to decide, you know. How much of a defense? Ah, no, no. Somebody from the Senate is stopping my work. <laughs> He's trying to stop this. Okay. We, um, so they're saying that, um, see, first of all, why is it that they are always beaming the searchlight on them, uh, calling them out about this? After all, they are not the only ones. Other arms of government use similar vehicles. Um, they said ministers, members of state, houses of assembly as well. Um, mm -hmm. He says the minister has more than three um, Land Cruisers, Prado and other vehicles, and you're not asking them any questions. It's us you're asking. Mm. Anyways, the reason why it's important is because the roads are bad. Terrible. And they have to drive all the way to their constituencies and back. Bad state and, and they even did a comparative analysis with our Nigerian assembled cars mm. and found out that the cost over time will be much more, you know, if we use that and the risk and the, you know, um, like it, 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 the roads will not allow for, yes, maintenance cost is much so more than this, have, have this new <laughs> SUV 160 million naira. Mm. So, Nigerians, your roads are too bad. So senators are going to find it very difficult to use any other cars, but the 2020... Unfortunately, it's not our hot topic, so we can't dwell on it. Well, it was so an interesting NAPC. defense. Let's move on that story. <laughs> NAPC, with their partners, um, Target Energy, Tantita Security Services, Operation Delta Safe, uncovered, with their air surveillance, they uncovered <laughs> thieves stealing our crude oil and processing it <laughs> in Nigeria here. They uncovered their CCTVs. They said that they now... They are far from regular criminals. They have taken their activities to a notch higher. <laughs> in the camps, they have CCTV cameras that are installed on trees. Ah, this one's a couple. By these things to monitor security operatives. Mm. They have uh, mounted mortar launchers, defense systems, ready to kill. Uh -huh. they, uh, this is a limited they, 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 they at, uh, you know, see as a, an enemy or a foe. <laughs> And they are busy in this Nigeria, this our today Nigeria, ready to carry on that business, their businesses. They said between, um, in this October, in a week, they uncovered over 40 something um, oil uh, wells that they are stealing from. They said that in the past weeks, there have been 149 incidences that were recorded in the Niger Delta alone. Mm -hmm. They are well orchestrated. Thief. And the fact that there is no electricity inside the uh, swamp, where they, they, they go, they, it does not deter them. Mm -hmm. They have about 49 illegal places that they are stealing from. No lights, no, they, no, they worry them. They constantly carry on their business. So the CCTV helps them monitor surveillance. When surveillance takes a break, they resume mm. and carry on their businesses. They say they've wow. been able to uncover all of that and will continue to see progress. Security I, services within security I fear services. no fear in Nigeria. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, the United States of Court of the District of Columbia has refused a request by Aaron Greenspan seeking to compel the U.S. security agencies to promptly release to him information, including documents relating to our president, Sinumbu. Um, Judge Beryl Howell, in a ruling on Monday, declined Greenspan's request on the grounds that he failed, technicalities again, he failed to satisfy the relevant conditions for the grant of such a prayer 
for a temporary relief as contained in the emergency hearing motion which filed on Friday. So if it was Nigeria that were saying that the stop zone for technicality would be complaining, mm. this was actually stopped based on technical, technical issues. So okay. I'm making the story about the major headline. The, if we recall, there was a, the time we daily led presidential fiscal policy and tax reform committee had gotten the they had gotten approval to present whatever they have come up with as suggestions they had 20 recommendations over um job creation forex reforms ease of doing business tax mainly was one of the things that they were going to discuss but uh, the recommend the 20, out of the 20 recommendations key ones will be that they are going to be expanding they are recommending expansion of official forex markets to include bdc's and they want to stop black market transactions they want to so that every forex transaction is tracked they also said they were going to sanction um, um transactions outside the official market stop speculative forex um demand as odin where you buy and you just hold with the hope that it goes higher and then you sell and they want to do this by digitizing forex um transactions transactions within nigeria for tax they said there were um over 60 tax and levies and these are making make, um, over 200 levies that are making life difficult for our people. So in providing relief, they said they want to relieve for private sector um, payment of tax on foreign currency. That's supposed to like st um, any foreign currency transaction, there'll be tax payment on them. Um, and withholding tax regulation, they are um, recommending reforms within that space. They also said that there should be six months removal of tax on diesel so as to ease for, for business yeah. ease. Then elimination of multiple taxes for so those jobs, who have dollars, they will yes, tax you. Yes, and if you are doing transaction, if you are dollars. If, you, if you are doing transaction in dollars, but that is tax. not through the official window, there will be tax, tax. as well. Um, there are many things that were recommended. I'm uh, waiting for. How would you get to tax? Okay. I'll be waiting for um, how how fast the implementation will take place because I know okay. we interviewed how him. How it's been right. implemented and how fast it will he be. Wants, we'll be calling him again for mm, updates. Yeah. Okay, let's move on quickly now to the punch. Tinubu panel asks government to drop 190 taxes, OPS blames states. Mm -hmm. um, DSS NAB's suspected terrorist wife recovers 150 AK-47 rifles. Mm -hmm. Lagos cancer doctor Olaleye bags live jail for rape. Mm -hmm. Slave Nigerian student Philippines police file murder cases against suspects. Senate probes 11 trillion refinery repairs, summons Kiari. EFCC chair orders staff to declare assets. And reps fault CBN's forex ban lift necker kicks. Okay, which story are we taking? Um, DSS in Niger State um, stormed a house um, after they got a tip off about um, from neighbors. And uh, during that um, operation, they said they discovered a large cache of AK-47 rifles and thousands of ammunition. So um, DSS had gotten like some intelligence about this person, uh, a suspected terrorist. And um, they proceeded to, you know, go to arrest him. Uh, but this terrorist in his house, he had CCTV cameras, so wow. he could see them as they approached him. Hmm. He said he, of course, engaged them in a gun fight. Um, and then he now launched a rocket bomb oh. or something that broke down his fence, and that was how he was able to escape. But he left his wife and children in the house. So the DSS um, apprehended the wife and children, and they found all this um, ammunition and um, arms, you know, in his house. Um, well, we'll just say that we hope that they find him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that these people are living cool. amongst <laughs> us, and they're using their houses just in our neighborhoods mm -hmm. to pile up these things, so... Okay, let me take the human, one of the human interest stories. The Philippine National Police has filed a murder case against a suspected Chinese person said to have been involved in the killing of a Nigerian medical student. She became Emmanuel in the country. The CC's friends um, in the chat have said that they have actually confirmed that they have been, um, that, the, the, um, that they have filed cases against this Chinese man indeed. Um, according to an ex-user, Chibu Kim was allegedly murdered by a group of Chinese. He disclosed that um, the deceased died of alleged torture mm. by his assailants who tied his hands and mouth and subsequently beat him to death. Um, he said the incident had happened um, in the Philippines and then we're happy that the, 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 the authorities have started taking this very seriously. Um, then, of course, Punch also tried to reach out to uh, the Nigerian, I think, Nidcom. Um, they contacted... Uh, Mr. Abdul Rahman at the commission, who only said that um, he got the Nigerian embassy in the Philippines 
and that, the, that they are also investigating to get an update on exactly what happened. And they will definitely be um, giving updates to the Nigerian, um, um, Nigerian government as soon as they have more information on what transpired and happened. But we are happy that at least NITCOM is on top of this and also the, um, the, the, international, um, the Ministry of International mm -hmm. Affairs. Okay. Any other story in punch? Oh, we're going to go on a break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. We had a so story. The EFCC boss has called all his uh, staff members in the EFCC agency to declare their assets. He says that all of us, <coughs> all of us are, are, must declare our assets from level 17 downwards. I did mine already. There's no reason for anybody, anybody to be afraid. Declare your assets. Even the commission secretary have all, already done theirs. And you, although you may have done it in the past, but there's need for everybody to do it again. He says that those who are the vanguard of, you know, fighting financial crime must be above board. Absolutely. They must, you know, and I agree totally because some lifestyles don't, just don't, may, you know, they don't correspond with, you know, the... It's not going to be based moment. on the account. But it's also important, not just as declare whatever you have yeah, but so going they forward. Collect, they don't put in the account anyway because mm. they know you can check it, so they collect uh, cash. Even, uh, so the lifestyle must be monitored. And you know, if your cash in your account does not show, show or lifestyle. correspond to your lifestyle, then we know that there's... He said it at the Senate yeah. when he was... He said some people's lifestyle and their spending, they are, you know, is just Different. not making sense. So I hope that he continues to interpret it as Okay, moving on now. No, 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 no. I'm taking the story about the refineries because all Nigerians are suffering the impact of not having refineries, the cost of um, of which we have spent so much money. So the Senate has called for a probe. The other committee supervising um, uh, the oil, the petroleum ministries have asked that they, super, they investigate how Nigeria has spent 11.35 trillion in 13 years and mm -hmm. on rehabilitating refineries that are still not working. Naira or dollar? Naira, actually. Um, the, the contracts are awarded. So um, the Den Deputy Senate President will be presiding over this. Other members of the committee are going to be asking the question. The motion is they will be calling the um, NNPC um, um, people that have led NNPC over time. And it is to check from 2013 till 2010 till date how this amount of money has been spent. And we still have four Moribon um, refineries. And I'm looking forward to hearing whatever, because we don't want to hear that this is how the money was spent. We want people to be culpable. Because they are saying that it's an allegation of sabotage that within the system sabotaged the efforts of the government and impoverishing Nigerians. Okay, the lady son, articles bid to expose FBI CIA records on Tinbu Fields. It will be at uh, task judiciary on election petition. Bandits attack mosque, kill two, injure two worshippers in Kaduna. Nigerian company launches unmanned aerial services drone production. Impeachment, Undo Deputy Governor asks CJ. To ignore letter from the assembly. FG obtains fresh $17 million loan from World Bank. Moribond refineries and NPCL faces 11.35 trillion naira prod. An alleged P and ID scam. EFCC opens case against fleeing Britain. Okay, so the EFCC opened its case at the Federal High Court in Abuja against Mr. James Nolan, who jumped bill back in 2022. Mm. The FCC counsel, Mr. Balasanga, led the first. Uh, uh, prosecution witness, um, that's Mr. his name is Mr. Tumitokwe Erinomo, um, and um, he's doing court. And uh, what happened was that Nolan, the director, uh, in the process and in the industrial development limited as PNID, jumped bail back in 2022 during the proceedings. And he has, he has not shown up, although his lawyer has been showing up, but he's not been showing up since 2022. And so they've actually filed um, <clears throat> a case against him um, to get him to report back to Nigeria to uh, face the charges that be held against him. Okay, so I have the story of, um, you know, the elite group of companies that has launched, an indigenous Nigerian company that has launched uh, the assembly in a production line of UAE, UAVs, drones, that's, um, unmanned vehicles, um, drones, and other security equipments within the country. And they said that they're looking at, you know, um, significantly reducing the extended delivery time that is usually, usually associated with ordering producing and waiting for uh, foreign companies to deliver such equipments to Nigerian cl clients. And so they have started the assembling and production of it within the country. I hope this, of course, is also going to increase um, employment. Mm. Peter will be, um, so the, 
We remember the Supreme, we said as the Supreme Court reserved judgment on the suit that was filed by the PDP candidate and LP candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, um, Mr. Peter Obi is challenging the outcome. Remember, it was the LP was challenging the outcome of the elections. So he's saying that um, he, he's maintaining that the panel had in law and reached a wrong conclusion when he dismissed his petition. He alleges that the panel wrongly evaluated the proof of evidence he had put before them and occasioned a grave miscarriage of justice when he held that he did not specify polling units where irregularities occurred during the election. Anyways, um, in summary, he's just saying that um, it's important that the rule of law is um, maintained. He says the rule of law remains the lifeblood of democracy in all societies and by whatever definition across time, remains the foundation for all our fundamental human rights. And he says that if this if we miss it, you know, and we instead put the rule of law of the powerful, the rule of law of the rich, you know, uh, democracy would be affected by it. So he does not agree with, you know, the final judgment of the tribunal. And I guess we'll see what goes on after now. Yeah. I want to take the story about um, the terrorist attack that took place in Kaduna State um, yesterday. In the early hours of Tuesday, terrorists went into a mosque and shot into the praying people, people that were praying. They killed the imam as well as one other person. This happened within the Buringwari um, local government area of Kaduna State, Sabonlai. It's an agrarian community. And they've said that the particular, this, this particular road, the Buringwari Kaduna Highway, has become a nightmare for travelers because there's constant att attacks taking place by terrorists. They're, they, on a, almost on a daily basis, that they patrol this area, killing innocent citizens and kidnapping people within that local government. And now an imam, as well as another person who went to pray in the early hours of Tuesday, were murdered while praying. And these terrorists seem to just come in, shoot, and get away with whatever they are doing. Of course, they are asking for more security help, but what can we say? Mm -hmm. Moving on now to Vanguard, Nigeria needs $10 billion annually to fund SDG, says federal government. FG extends stay of recalled envoys by three months. SUVs we considered cost bad roads before approving land cruiser, says Senate. <laughs> Alleged anti-party activities, Deputy Speaker Minister at war. Lack of financial autonomy hampering growth of the 774 local government, says federal government. Presidential poll, INEC must probe why upload of results to IRF field, says Jega. And Senate to probe federal government's 11.35 trillion term of refineries. Clark seeks expulsion of Abia Imo Undo from NDDC. Okay, which story? <coughs> okay, can I take a story not on the front page but in the vanguard? Mm -hmm. The former president of Basanjo was speaking at the 2024 Canada Trade Mission pre conference <laughs> session that was held in Abiokuta yesterday, on Monday, sorry, and he lamented that there's a wickedness happening right mm -hmm. now because our Adire is no longer Adire from Abeokuta, where it's the origin, where it originated. It's imported. But well, it's now Chinese Adire. Yes. And it says that the federal government must put a ban Absolutely. on some such a thing that, you know, goes to the very heritage yes. of our people. I totally agree with him. I mean, I think, I think that's why even CBN, well, CBN the governor was summoned mm -hmm. by the House. Yes. These ones that are removed. Yes, some products. things are just not to... supposed to be. Yeah. Yes. So, um, let me take the story from the, I think it's the minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, um, Zafana Jisalo, made, said, said that local government administration in Nigeria um, must be empowered. According to her, um, the financial restrictions faced by the 774 local governments across the country is hampering their growth. This is a conversation we've always had for, for the past mm -hmm. few years. We, see it, we repeat it here on the show every time. But she, she, she recently uh, was very specific, emphasizing that the capacity of local government councils to offer crucial services to grassroots communities was gravely affected by financial inadequate, inadequacy, uh, for infrastructure and lack of autonomy. The minister said that the situation had led to frustration and likelihood of um, growth discontent in the country. And we need to really, this has to be addressed and, and, and addressed immediately for, for sustainable growth. So um, we're talking about still some sort of sustainable development, SDG, um, and the federal government is, the, the, the conversation from Ms., Mrs. Okpayemi, um, um, Orelokwe Adefulire, Adefulire, 
um, said that the Nigeria would actually need to spend $10 billion on a monthly, on a yearly basis to be able to sustain the SDG goals. We're talking about leveraging technology. And they said they cannot do it, we, we, the government can't do it alone. That the government needs partnership with private sector to be able to um, support and keep up with the, um, delivering the SDG. He said they are also engaging with them. They need, there needs to be investment in infrastructure. They need to um, have this partnership would be, could be done through CSR and um, a way to mobilize their resources so that it is channeled directly towards SDG advantages. They also were talking about how to raise these funds, having clear-cut strategies so that long-term we're able to deliver the... Nigeria is always not at power when it comes to SDG, but at least if we get more funding to them, yeah. we'll be able to see growth within that area. All right, let me just run quickly. We have the Nigerian Tribunal, let's find so we've not taken. U.S. court denies urgent request for um, Tinubu's um, dossier. Reps invites CBN governor over the lifting of Forex ban on 43 items. Nigeria to vaccinate 7.7 .7 million girls against the leading cause of cervical cancer. Southwest mm. governors visit Akere Dolu in Ibadan. This HPV yes. vaccine, the yeah. Nigerians are controversially saying that is the end of the world. Vaccine. Which end of the wow. world? Well, they've yeah, launched it in Nigeria. Nigeria. They have seen the five-day mass vaccination campaign in schools and communities, and 70.7 .7 million girls are targeted uh, um, across the country. So, Nigeria, please, before you start. So people will be say, passing these videos across WhatsApp saying that this is the end time vaccination. Mm -hmm. do that. So there were, we get this there were videos there abroad about side effects. Can you say there that? There were is... videos about side effects okay. and they are really, really scary I've side effects. HPV. You know, so. I have, Thank you. I, 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 and so a... people have been taking the vaccine. I have been waiting for my years. daughter to turn nine so we yes. can go together. Yes. It's been forever. Ever. It's not a new it's one. Thank you. So it's not a new vaccine. Let's go and as well. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we'll bring Preventive in our sponsored cancer. guests from Erudite Group. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.